Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Ruckcast. Um, you might immediately notice that I've been replaced by a much smarter and better looking uh, co-host this time. Uh, John is unavailable. So I said, you know what? We should probably get somebody who you know actually dresses up for this type of stuff and um, and knows Wi-Fi as opposed to John and I. So um, I brought a friend, <laughs> brought a friend of ours on. I'm not that dressed up, man. I'm missing my tie. I feel naked. Maybe I should I, go get a tie. Well, yeah, th this is only like the second. I've known you for how many years, Fernay? I mean, I don't know, many. <laughs> oh, but and this is like only the second time I've ever seen you without a tie. So um, this is, it, it's always I, a little oh, bit of a yeah. shock. <laughs> so so um, the, we're joined today by Fernay Munoz, um, who is a, if, you, if you're if you in the Wi-Fi community, then everybody knows Fernay. But um I wanted to bring him on and talk a little bit about um, Fernay and have him introduce himself because he's doing some really cool things. And I wanted to bring it to our listeners and and viewers. And and um, so I thought this was a good chance. So Fernay, um, why don't you take a couple minutes and just introduce yourself real quick, and and um, and then we'll we'll get to talking here. Absolutely. Uh, first, thanks for having me on your show. Um, I'm originally from Colombia, and uh, I came here back in '99 to. Uh, visit some friends that I met when I was a child and uh, I ended up staying. I started working as a volunteer at a, at a school district here in Utah. And uh, originally we uh, were just doing all the, you know, installing, installing Windows 95 and fixing computers, you know, swapping power supplies and things like that and, uh, and running wires. And, you know, people started bringing all these little, you know, wireless things that they had in their houses and they wanted them connected to a network. And, uh, we ended up with, I don't know, 500 of those um, Apple Airport Express wireless devices throughout the classrooms and stuff. Later, we had uh, a solution that was uh, zeros, you know, a big flying saucer looking access points. And then later, we had about 1,300 ruckus access points. We had uh, ruckus everywhere, you know, 7363s and, and the 7982s. And then later, we got the... Uh, the 700s and the 710s and you know now after i left the district now they uh they're over 2000 ap's now they have all all flavors in it and of course all kind of controllers and doing stuff so that's how i kind of like ended up in wi-fi mostly because you know they just started creeping up in our networks and uh we had to learn it and uh and now i do uh some of the eka training and uh, i do a wlpc conference with mr keith parsons uh and just consulting and testing and just trying to keep up with everything that is happening in this world of wi-fi <laughs> i have to laugh because you brought up a zeros and <laughs> a lot of people might not know that but if you if you happen to look right above Fernay's head hanging on his on his rack of ap's up there the, <laughs> he's got a zeros ap above his head which i i saw that earlier that made and, me laugh and actually it's not calling ap is an array because that one has 12 oh. radios 12 of them so <laughs> <laughs> so here's my question though is it is, is it on or can you well, not right you... now but uh, i turn it on every once in a while in class uh, like, or when I'm like writing papers or stuff that I need to show like 12 APs, then in one array, I have 12 radios that I can configure and show in a Wi-Fi Explorer Pro really neatly how you know, things are. So yeah, very useful actually. Use it a lot. So, so yeah, so, so Fernay has a lot of, and, and Fernay is actually, he might not know this or not, might not even remember this, but Fernay is a big reason why I'm at Ruckus, um, because I took, um, I think I took ECSE uh, design from you at WLPC, That's and right, um, yeah. and and he he was he was my instructor when I was struggling to complete the ECSE final exam, and and I couldn't do the cool thing I wanted to do, and 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 I remember sitting up front in your class and just wreaking havoc and just being <laughs> a, I mean, a great. Yeah, I know me me wreaking havoc, but it, I was a great distraction in the class, and I I just remember, um, you know, and it was it was it was a thing of you always using the the Ruckus R seven ten as every time you'd want to demo an AP, you'd be like, hey, let's let's use a Ruckus R seven ten, let's use a Ruckus R seven ten, and so after I was defeated um, by your 
by your exam of trying to do the three floors of that building, you know, with all the different things, I was like, I was like, let me try a Ruckus R710. I was like, maybe, maybe Fernay's onto something. And so, so that's, um, that's when I first got really introduced was thanks to Fernay. And now I'm here. So thank you, Fernay. Although well, thank you. My, my, my boss might not thank you very much uh, because now he has to deal with me, but eh, you know, <laughs> So, um, so you were talking about WLPC and I wanted to bring this up because, um, by the time people are watching this, you are actually going to be in Spain. You are actually getting on a plane later on the day we're recording to get on a plane, to go to Spain for WLPC. Can you take a few minutes and just sort of, um, tell everybody, you know, kind of a little bit of high level, what WLPC is and what you're going to be doing in Spain with WLPC. Perfect. Um, WLPC was a conference started by uh, Mr. Keith Parsons. Uh, I attended the first one that was in Austin uh, back in 2014. We just celebrated the 10th year anniversary. And it was a conference that he wanted to do for just go and talk about Wi-Fi. You know, most of the conferences we, we go to is just vendor driven and there's marketing and sales and, you know, they scan your name to get, you know, or give you a stamp to get a prize or, or get into a joint. We wanted a conference where you just go and, you know, talk to your friends and, and do uh, the things you like to do and receive swag that you want to receive, not just pens and cup holders and, and socks, but like things you can use and, and walk out of a, of, a, of a conference with a tool or with a license to access something or with an AP or anything like that. And, uh, and he did that experiment and, you know, we're 10 years going on. I've done a few uh, in Spanish. Uh, I did the first one in 2017 in Bogota. And then we did a second one in Mexico City a couple of years ago. And then we did a third one in, in Medellin, Colombia. And now this is the first year we're going to bring it up to Spain. Uh, and we're going to have it in Valencia. Well, Valencia. You want to pronounce it, you know, how the locals of Valencia. <laughs> and then um, it's, it's a conference where we just go. We have classes like for, for this one, we have two boot camps. One is going to be the uh, uh, CWAP the analysis professional, uh, those three days before the conference. And then uh, there's the certified Hamina network architect. That uh, that class is going to be uh, delivered by Diego Huertas. Of course, it will be in Espanol. He goes from Colombia to deliver it. Only have two boot camps. This is a smaller conference. Uh, with the, one in the U.S., we get, you know, between three and 400 people. The one in Europe is about 200 people, and we're outgrowing the venues. Uh, these ones in Latin America are smaller, you know, kind of like trying to bring this to a more affordable pace. Uh, it's the same format, same format as WLPC, just in Espanol. That's the one thing. And then we have the... Uh, the uh, shorter time and then in here we're going to do uh, deep dives going to be shorter and in series so in, since this is a small group breaking it into smaller groups is kind of difficult so we decided to just have shorter deep dives and make them one after the other so we're going to have four of them this year one's going to be in pen testing that uh, Vanessa Diaz from Mexico is going to go and deliver then I will be delivering the uh, Wi-Fi Explorer Pro because Adrian is not going to be able to go. Um, he was originally, I know, he was originally scheduled yeah. for that. And then I said, like, hey, you know, your, your deep dive still carries on. I will deliver it for you. So everybody's going to get a, a license of Wi-Fi Explorer Pro. Isn't that a good perk? And then um, Julio Petrovich from uh, Netalai is going to come and give a deep dive on the Cyberscope Air. And guess what? He's going to raffle one of them at the end of the class. So some lucky winner, man, is going to take one of those beautiful toys home. And then there's going to be the Hamina certified. Well, it's not this whole certification, but it's the Hamina deep dive. The same that uh, these guys do at WLPC in Europe and uh, in the U.S. and in Mexico. They're going to uh, deliver it in, um, in Valencia. So, yeah, we're going to have those four deep dives, just two days of presentations and classes. So it's a conference where you come and learn and meet other people that are doing what you do and basically just expand knowledge and meet new people in the field. That's basically what it's all about. You know, I, after hearing you say that, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little sad that I'm not going. I mean, because- You can come to Mexico in November. Yeah, 
but you know, but I'm sitting here going, man, going to Valencia. Cool. Um, you know, all, all four of those deep dives. Very cool. You know, the, the, um, little, the, um, Net Ally Etherscope or the not the it's a site. What do they call it? Cyberscope. It Cyberscope Air. Cyberscope Air. I, I I want one of those, and so I'm just sitting here going, yeah. Now Fernay is going to run off into his man cave and uh, and pull it out for us. But um, and again, it's one of those things that Fernay was mentioning about. You know, when you yeah yeah I want one of the uh, is is WLPC is all about it's it's it, you you don't get the pens, you don't get the, all the other little, you know, squishy balls or things like that. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, you get to leave, you have the potential to leave with one of these and you get the tools, you know, um, the Wi-Fi Explorer Pro, which if you are a Wi-Fi professional, okay, that's kind of, I like that. That's kind of a nifty little, that little power up really screen. Cool, I, yeah. And now you're making me. So yeah. that's, that's what WLPC is. And I didn't mention it, but I'm going to go ahead and, and mention it is that um, the one in the US and the one in Europe and even well, we have to admit that Spain is in is part of Europe, but the one the one in the northern part of Europe uh, is is mainly English focused. And and so the the Spain one and the one uh, later in the year, uh, Mexico right. City is in November, November. That, yes, November is um part of a bigger effort that Fernay's been working on. And I've been accident. I don't know if it was an accident, but I was included in one of his calls um, a few years ago where he's trying to bring the community to Spanish speaking. Um, and so that's sort of the push and effort there. And so um, if you are a Spanish listener, um, you know, that's why I wanted to talk about this is because there, there is this community that Fernay is building um, to go do this stuff. And WLPC is, is, you know, Fernay has been the, the, the flag bearer for this one. And so, you know, I really have to tip my hat to you for, for putting in all this work to build that community and to be able to bring WLPC to that. And yes, I, the, the plan is for me to be in Mexico city, uh, in November to teach, teach a deep dive, which, um, I didn't realize I had to condense it. So that's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> we will, we will make that one work. Um, but I wanted to, I want to take a little bit of time now that we've covered WLPC to talk about your, this, your community, um, you know, not just of the WLPC, which I think is just kind of part of your, uh, Tesos and Wi-Fi, uh, community, but I want to talk to you more about that. Really. That's really where I want to go. Can you, um, tell us like how that comes to be and how, you, you know, if somebody wants to join, how they could do that? I mean, what, what is that all about? Well, Tesos and Wi-Fi uh, happened thanks to COVID. You know, COVID you know, brought a lot of disruption to the world, but it brought a lot of good things also to many industries. And I think our community benefited from a lot of these things. And one thing that is true is that many jobs disappear or change or shifted, but jobs in technology just got stronger and like more relevant for for this world and after teaching classes uh face to face you know people used to ask in the past like hey do you guys do online classes like no that's not training you know we have to be there in class with the instructor and then COVID hit and then like we were sent home and we had to start teaching this online which i love right now because we have more time to cover things the flexibility helps people you know from multinationals to just be in training all the time they're like camera for oh you know what happened is that that thing the gestures thing that you do it just freezes my camera anyway so we uh ended up teaching classes online and uh and one of those weeks after class friday afternoon i started a zoom call and called a friend uh, felipe rangel in, in in medellin in colombia and i said hey you know how's covid how's you know being confined and just kind of like talking about it he was in his backyard flying a kite with his daughter and you know and telling me how work was how working from home was and and kids in 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 school but you know in, in from home all these things you know that we all lived through for a year and then you know we talked for a good half an hour about work about things that are going on and then i told him like <clears throat> you know what maybe we should do this like every week and say like what like meet like 
me show. Okay, so I sent an email to like all the people I had in my contacts that spoke Spanish. And I said, hey, this is an invitation to the second Tesos in Wi-Fi meeting. And everybody was like, second, how come I was not invited to the first one? <laughs> and then people started showing up. Like that first one, we had like 100 people. Um, and we would just talk about like, hey, you know, how's life? How's, how is it going? And then we had like the, the first five, 10 minutes, it was just chit chat talking. And this is the type of meeting, kind of like when you are at the office and then at the end of the week, you go and meet with your friends, you know, and hey, let's have a beer or let's just share a coffee and, and talk, you know, and then you talk issues and now oh, I'm going to go play soccer over the weekend or, you know, my son's got this game and you're kind of like the chit chat you do outside of work at the end. And, and then you start talking about, you know, oh man, I have this issue, this client side that, you know, I haven't been able to figure it out and stuff like that. But we do it at a global scale. It's not just with your coworkers in your office. It's just like, you know, guys from Mexico join, guys from Spain join, guys from Argentina and Chile and, and all these people just come together. And then we talk and then we record everything and upload it to a website that I created. It's called the Wi-Fi of things.com. So every session is recorded up there and, and uh, uploaded to it. And uh, sometimes we have to pause the recordings because, you know, some talks that you have on the weekends with your friends cannot be recorded. <laughs> so we pause the recording, then we talk. And, 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 you know, sometimes it's like a guy is like, hey, guys, I need some advice. Can you, you know, like stop the recording? Sure, sure. We stop the recording. It's like, I'm sh shifting jobs. I got this offer, but I don't know how to approach this. I don't know how to tell my boss. So we also help each other. Oh, you know, you should approach it this way, you know, or it's going to sound better if you kind of do it then and and things like that so we help each other as friends and then we have we have also shared you know we laugh and make fun of things and sometimes we had difficulty you know like people that have lost loved ones you know and then we kind of like address that and and then yeah we we have shared you know some difficult moments for some of us in the community and then we're, like we're there like one of the it's every friday and we just do it regardless like I think it was last year, the year before the, uh, the 31st of December. So New Year's Eve and, of course, Christmas Eve, they landed on a Friday. So we still did it. So for us, we found that 11 a.m. Mountain Time works good because Colombia and all those other places will be like two hours ahead of us or one hour. And then Spain is going to be like 7, 8 p.m. And then we have people from from Italy, people that lead that are Spanish speakers, but live in Stockholm. You know, like we have members like Alejandro. He's from Argentina, but he lives in Stockholm. And then it's like nighttime for him. So all these guys gather and uh, this community has grown to that point that you know we have people from all over the world connecting. Uh, Tesos, for those of you asking, that's a Colombian word that uh, means like someone that is skilled or something at something so jim you'll be a teso in rf okay because you know, <laughs> rf is your thing so you're like a skilled person in rf uh tesos and wi-fi you know like somebody that is skilled in wi-fi but it's just more than wi-fi you know that oh yeah just wi-fi touches switches routers <laughs> firewalls everything <laughs> And then, yeah, we had guys from uh, Radio Links talking to us and teaching us. A guy from Argentina uh, taught us, you know, like how to create links and on license space. And then we had Aruba experts and we had Ruckus experts and Cisco experts and all these guys gather. And then we talk and help each other out. And then like uh, sometimes we just create sessions out of like a friend once called me from Mexico and said, hey, you know, for now, I need your help. You know, I'm with this uh client side and I have an issues with this Sonos speaker and then they have Cisco infrastructure. So it's like, look, I don't know much about Sonos and I don't know much about Cisco either, but hey, <laughs> let me just create a session and then I create a Zoom session, send out the link to the group and within minutes, like boom, 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 guys started connecting from different parts of the world. And then he explained, you know, this is what I'm doing. And then the conversation, because, you know, the Cisco guy would say, oh, you know, check this. And oh, go to RF profile. And then the, <laughs> the other guy said, oh, you know, we tried this. And it ended up being something with uh, MDNS and some configuration for multicast and things like that. But that just shows how the community has grown to a point that it's not just to chit chat and talk about how you week, how was it, but to train and help others in, in this 
world that we live in, you know, because everything is connected and, and we cannot be experts at everything. There's so much that you haven't, we hadn't learned AC when AX hit and then we were free, trying to figure <laughs> out AX when Wi-Fi 6E hit and then now we're talking AFCs and now we're talking all of these Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi 8 and, you know, 802.11 MC and all this stuff. So some of these guys specialize in certain things and uh, that's what they do. Um, members of the community that are like in, in hospitals, big hospital networks that they manage, you know, thousands and thousands of APs and stuff. They also participate and contribute and, and teach. And we have trainings like every week we show how to do things and somebody will come with a problem. That's the other thing. Like guys will come like, you know, I had this issue where access points are not going to uh, are not being found by Ekahau and this band. Then we start testing and then, yes, we realize that some of the stuff that a uh, sidekick is supposed to do, like for instance, um, with the computer, you cannot find APs in non-PSC channels, see? And uh, you can find them with the iPad and the iPhone, but not with the computer. And then the other thing that we discover is that uh, Ekahau does not show the channel width correctly, like some APs. Oh, let me see my camera froze again. How do I unfreeze this thing? There we go, it's back on. So it, it doesn't find all of the uh, channel widths correctly. Like I have APs in channel, let's say 133 at 80 megahertz wide channel, or 160 megahertz wide channel, and then it's found and detected as a 20 megahertz wide channel. So some guys have come like, hey, you know, I did a survey and I couldn't see any AP in six gig, even though I was on the control and I could see all of them. So that's how we start learning about some of these things. Let me give you another example. I was in Jamaica um, doing a survey at a convention center where there were some issues with Aruba APs. And then I called one of the Tesos and Wi-Fi uh, group members from Mexico. I said, hey, you know, I'm doing this with this uh, model of AP and that's the problem. And then he said, like, yeah, I've seen this before. And said, like, and I'm ready to upgrade. And he stopped me and said, no, 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 don't <laughs> upgrade. Don't upgrade, downgrade. Because then, you know, that's going to like, oh, okay. So, I mean, you always think like, move forward, get the newer release. And then one of these guys, he stopped me and said, you know, downgrade. And that fixed the problem. So sometimes, yes, you have support. You can create a ticket. And then you're going to get a call back. And then, you know, you have to go through a normal process. But having members of the community that are just there and are your friends, then it's kind of like cool that you can... You can do that as well. So that's what the community evolved to. It's not just a group of guys talking about their weeks and ranting about something, but learning and teaching others, you know, about other stuff, you know, things that maybe they specialize in. So that's what the community is all about. And, you know, I, I don't know if we could even stress this enough, B, and you've been doing this, you know, building the community longer than I have, but, you know, the the whole learning from each other thing is just so invaluable. I mean, I did a presentation at WLPC a few months ago in Phoenix, and I used your rant from uh, this one of the Slack channels, you know, because it was like it was like you know, Fernay did ninety percent of the work for me and laying everything out, and I was just like, I was like, yeah, you know, and and it's and I've been tracking that that you were talking about the six gigahertz um, surveying and not being able to see the channels and the PSCs, and I've been tracking that as well because it's one of those things where you know. You, especially with the new stuff, there's just so much and there's, and you only have so many minutes and hours in the day. You need that community to bring that, you know, because it's, it's kind of like having just this whole network going out and doing all, their own thing and then bringing it and reporting it back and saying, Hey, this is what we're finding. You know, we're finding that this is happening. And, and so having a community, especially in something like Wi-Fi, you know, and you mentioned that I'm a Tesos in RF and it's funny because I've talked to some people who I would, you know, look up to and say, hey, you know, they, you know, I kind of know RF, they really know it. And they all tell me the same thing. They always say, I know enough to know that as soon as I think I know something, it will change or I'm going to learn something different. And so that's why I really appreciate the people who really sort of take hold and drive these communities because with RF, especially anything wireless, there's so much that can change, especially when, you know, you taught this in the, in the ECSE class I took from you, you know, the game, you know, and, and DCF. And it's like, when you suddenly realize like what it takes for a client device to associate to my AP here over my shoulder, 
and and make those lights go orange like you pointed out earlier um it's like what that what it takes for that to happen is just so amazing it's like it's like you have to have that help and that support from other people to you know not only valid and sometimes just to validate to make sure that what you're seeing you're just not crazy you know it's like it's like am i really seeing this and so um i'll tell you what's crazy is that it works as complex as it is <laughs> you know it works all the time and that's one of the big problems is that uh it was designed since the beginning to simply work and uh nowadays today you know large deployments in different parts of the world they are just poorly configured and people are suffering and having a bad experience because the technology is working but not working as good as it should work and i think that's that's one of the things we cannot stress enough is to get people trained and kind of like share that knowledge with others because some people are being thrown in this situation where they are now in charge of you know 600 ap's at the business because you know the wi-fi guy left and hey you've been running the cables and mounting those white boxes those routers up in the scene you know wi-fi like, yeah i know wi-fi you have wi-fi yeah i have wi-fi in my house you configure yourself yeah yeah I get like, oh you know wi-fi boom now you're the wi-fi person and you know now they are without without the knowledge you know uh doing all these deployments and um and many people this one thing that that kind of gets me jim is that uh, i've been to places and i say okay you know let's go walk with me and i'll show you and you'll get your tools out and then they get like you know wi-fi analyzer on android like <laughs> what, what other tools do you have like no that's it i don't get approval to you know like go to training or, or buy you know a professional grade tool and it's it's interesting that companies will spend millions of dollars in infrastructure but they cannot approve you know five six thousand dollars for training or, or go to a conference or or get a, a license to a product that is going to help them understand better this technology so education I, I think is you know as as much as companies talk about ai and all of this you know you're going to be replaced by computers there is still the human factor that is needed to to accomplish this i've seen so many poor uh rm deployments that you know it will just ap's with 400 milliwatts of power in a one AP per classroom deployment like what do you need 400 milliwatts if all you're covering is one classroom and then other APs at three milliwatts you know it's like the discrepancies and and APs at 160 megahertz wide channels in uni one and uni two basically everything is in one channel all of these are results of algorithms that are not working well and you still need the humans to go out there and i think the the sharing of knowledge is one of the keys to uh, improve the infrastructure. And nowadays, the lives of people depend on Wi-Fi. It is needed to, to understand this uh, so that uh, we can benefit from it. Industries, you know, the oil industry, nuclear power plants, all these one wireless, not necessarily just Wi-Fi, but they all want wireless. And we just have to understand it and have other people out there that, you know, understand it well enough to, to configure it properly. Yeah, it's, um, it is, it's amazing. You know, we, and we've, you and I know this, so this isn't news to us, but you know, we always talk about how, you know, 20 years ago, Wi-Fi was this kind of cool, nice thing to have, but anymore it's, it's a, it's a utility just as much as people expect the lights to be on. Um, you know, there's bathrooms with running water. They expect the Wi-Fi to be there, that wire, you know, and to your point it, in, anymore, there's even more to, the wireless than just Wi-Fi. There's the, all the IoT stuff, the Halo, the Zigbee, the you know BLE, the CBRS. There's all this stuff, and and as a Wi-Fi professional, we're being asked to you know kind of take on more and more. And Absolutely. We, have, we still only have 24 hours in the day, and I, like I tell my boss, I'm like, look, I still only have two hands, and so I can only type so much so fast. So, yeah, um, the sharing the sharing of knowledge is just again, it's it's something that we have to be able to do to, you know, keep keep up and and keep up with the demands that we have. So, um, so can anybody join Tesos and Wi-Fi, or um, is oh, it restricted? Yeah. How, how does no, that work? No, no, no. We're, we're not, I mean, this is just a group of friends and uh, we have people from different backgrounds. And again, this is vendor agnostic. Uh, we're not like, oh, we only take the Ruckus people, the Cisco people. No, no, like everybody. 
from any field. And I had guys who say like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very good at Wi-Fi. Like, but you do switching, you do security, you do firewalls, you know, come and help us teach us something about you, what you do. And, uh, and then I think everybody is an expert on something. You know, like we had this girl at, at WLPC Mexico said, hey, you know, do a presentation because unlike the conferences in, in the U.S. and Europe where people fight to get a presentation slot in, in there I have to fight to get people to present because, you know, we don't have enough people. In. So I had like, okay, you're presenting. No, I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. Like, well, you have to know something. What do you work here? Tell me about yourself. And then long story short, this girl that, you know, she had nothing to present about. She didn't know anything. She was not, you know. And she ended up managing a network with about 300,000 access points because all she did, she worked for a, a service provider in a country in Central America. And then she was in charge of testing and making sure the deployment of all of these modems that were sent home were, were properly. And then she had visibility of all of them and all the sound like, you manage one of the biggest <laughs> networks I've heard anybody manage, you know? And then some people, they just don't get the scope of what they do because you no, know, they're so used to it. They do every day like, oh yeah, of course, you know, that's normal. They, it comes natural <laughs> to them. But for us like, whoa, really? That's exciting. So everybody, is good at something switching routing cabling firewalls point to point i don't know talking to people you know it's just yeah. one of the things so anybody can join and then it's very simple they just send me a personal email to my uh, fernay 75 at gmail.com account and then i just add them to the list and every week i create a zoom meeting and then i send them an invite with the link to the meeting and then if they can, they come and join and participate of it live. And many people always come to the live sessions. Others, they cannot. You know, Fridays are hard. You know, you have end of week and you're always busy and some, some cannot. But others will watch it later and then they will come back all the time. They're like, hey, you know that problem that Alex from Spain mentioned? I had and this is how I solved it. So they send me the info and then I later say, hey, Alex, you know the problem you had? And then... You know, that's how, how things start evolving. Or sometimes guys come up and say, hey, you know, I cannot be at the session, but I had this issue, so I bring it up on their behalf, and then other guys respond and contribute. So it's very simple. And then later when I'm recorded and uploaded it, and sometimes we have to, you know, crop things out and remove <laughs> sections of the video, or sometimes we keep the audio and remove just the, the video because guys like, hey, I have this problem. I cannot show this because of customer privacy. So it's like not a problem. We discuss it. We talk about it. We help and you know, go here, click there, and then we walk them through. But then later we have to just delete the video because it shows eight IP addresses and company names and stuff. So privacy uh, is everything for us. And, you know, in our industry, we just have to be really careful with what's out there. Uh, and we just try to help each other in a way that it's it doesn't feel the pressure that, oh, man, if I talk to this group, my boss is going to know about it. Or And sometimes I have bosses and their uh, employees there because they realize, okay, I need my, my guy to be here and learn about this. And then what happens is that uh, the community starts getting more like trusting each other. And then knowing that, hey, you know, I can talk to these guys about it. They'll give me good advice or they will show me how to do it. And then they also start loosening up and like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know how to do that. Let me show you, you know. And then like we have this guy in Spain. His name is David Garcia. And uh, like we were talking once about um, Wireshark, you know, like doing some filters and stuff. And and he was like, oh, like, um, well, I, you know, I, I – um, I have something, I mean, it's something silly, you know? And then he showed us like these big things on how to filter things and how to like analyze conversation. Like, that's great. I didn't know how you could do that. Like, well, I, I, I do it all the time in my, you know, my job. Like, like, yes, I know you're so used to it that for you, it's like, oh, there's some silly thing. Like, there's nothing silly about it. The knowledge that each person has that is just like everyday thing for others. It's probably something they've been struggling with and something that's going to make their lives easier in their jobs. So sharing knowledge, is, that's what it's all about. So a community, very simple. Just send a personal email or go to the Wi-Fi of things.com. That's the website, www.thewi5ofthings.com. And then we upload every session there. And we are up to 202 sessions. So Holy. And counting. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because 
you know, it's one every week and so every time there is a special event, like I, I, I was a delegate for the first time at a, um, a mobility field day. So I uploaded some of the sessions there. So that's what we we're trying to do. Join us and uh, as an Espanol, but uh, we've had uh, English speaking guests. So this uh, Spanish English type of community. Uh, and maybe someday you should come and join us, Jim, and then we'll talk about, you know, RF and your journey and, you know, all that stuff is and, open for everybody. You know, I've, I've been meaning to, and I think this might be the, the catalyst I need to, uh, to get signed up and, uh, and, and just see, see what it's all about and see, see what I can do to help contribute. Cause yeah. I'll tell you, I, I, I know. I know a little about a lot and then I know a lot about one thing, like you were saying. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I might have to just come over and check you guys out. Um, yeah. but that's, it's really cool what you're doing. And, um, you know, and on behalf of the rest of the community, um, you know, thank you for that because it is, you know, we need, we need people like you to do that stuff and bring your enthusiasm and stuff like that. So, um, and, and again, I know we've talked about it offline, uh, multiple times, but, you know, you're a big fan of ruckus too. So that doesn't, that doesn't hurt. Yeah. You got the puppy and, and, uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, uh, we'll have to, um, we'll put those links in there and, uh, into our show notes so people can, people can know how to find you and, and get involved in the community. And yeah. And I, and I had a guy, uh, from Russia I was like, Hey, you know, I watch your podcast and, and your videos like, but they're in Spanish. Like, wow, well, you know, we put the subtitles and stuff and we learn from, all of these like oh that's really cool and then uh jan raster a guy from uh the university of milan in italy he speaks spanish yeah. and he joined us at the beginning now he has his own like tesos and wi-fi in italy community wow so he, he kind of did the same thing that he started like gathering people and just people uh, that speak italian and they are in wi-fi or they are in it they also gather have meetings and share knowledge and teach each other and help each other so all of these things are really helpful and uh one of the things to keep in mind jim is that before we are experts or whatever we do or before we are it people we are humans we are humans yeah. and then yes as you said there are enough not enough hours in the day you have to do your job but you also have to take your kids to activities or or you have your sick uh, spouse or your sick children your sick parents that you have to take care of and then we we have lives you know and we all have struggles and we all have uh, issues and sometimes you just need someone you can call and and help not only just to talk about wi-fi but hey maybe you just had a loss in the family maybe you just need a advice on how to you know change careers or maybe maybe you're struggling maybe you need help and and this is a community that is just so close and so tight that we help each other out without and, and in here there is like no uh, compensation for any of this all of these guys come voluntarily they come and teach others without expecting anything nothing not even a beer because we're like thousands of miles away from each other <laughs> you know and this is the coolest thing that sometimes like we are meetings and there, there's a guy you know cooking you know and then they have cameras on and we're talking, hey what are you cooking there and he's like oh we're doing some shrimp and you know like for dinner and then it's just you know sharing life so that's one of the good things about technology is that we can be anywhere and still be connected um once uh we had a session and uh i happened to be at the hospital with my daughter because playing with my son she cut her head open and she ne ended up needing stitches and it was time for the meeting i started and then, hey guys you know i'll be here for the beginning and then i gotta go but you know i make somebody else the host and off you go you know here's your thing so we have a uh, open subject every week that somebody can just come and talk what about whatever and the presentations are not like they have to be all structured and they have to have slides like no no it's just you know we're just talking about it so trying to make it easy and uh welcoming and just comfortable you know that you're not afraid and uh we're edit things we'll delete things or just not display i i, I, I had to remove <laughs> a couple of entire episodes like you know Eka how forced me to remove one because in one of the sessions somebody that's when six gig came out and the psychic two and i posted hey you know this is the psychic two look got it right here there's the psychic two and i was showing about six gig and somebody was like Oh yeah, and this other company, Hamina, or something came up, and they started talking about Hamina. And then because they saw Hamina on my podcast, and you know I'm an Ekahau guy, then I ended up deleting the whole episode. So 
things like that happen sometimes, but that what we're trying to do is just make this community in a way that, you know, we can talk to each other and, and help each other out. You know, you're in Ruckus today, uh, but tomorrow maybe you have your own company or maybe somebody's working at Cisco today, but tomorrow they're going to be at MIST. Not that that happens very often in the industry, you know, <laughs> that people move from company to company or that a company gets bought by another company and now you have to go from blue to yellow or orange or I don't know, whatever colors they have. So <laughs> keep in mind, before we are professionals or before we were somebody, we're humans and this is such a small world that I think we, we have to understand that community goes beyond, you know, the dog that we care about or the colors of our company. It's, I mean, companies are nothing. You know what companies are made of, Jim? Humans. People. Yeah. Yes. People. And it's just knowing, having that relation with these people that makes these companies go and give you access to, to all this knowledge. So yeah, let's, let's keep the community going and create your own. You know, I had this guy, I think it was from the Netherlands. They say, you know, can we do it? Like, you know, create a community, just guys that speak Dutch. Or if you're in, in a French speaking country and you just have a small group of guys, then create a small group of IT guys in your, in your community. You know, guys that do, I don't know, schools or that are in education or hospitality or stuff. Create your own community. And, uh, you know, there is no, sometimes we have meetings and just like one guy shows up and he's like, but it's just you and me. Are we still going to have a session? He's like, hey, this is a session. You and I are community. Let's have a talk, you know, and off we go. And then it gets recorded and it gets uploaded. And then we learn. If you learn at least one new thing in every session, that's good enough for me. So share knowledge, join a community or create one, you know. If you cannot join one, then create one. <laughs> Fernay, this is fantastic stuff, and I would love to keep talking with you for um, you know for another couple hours. But um, I know <laughs> I know go. you got to you got to you got to go and uh, and and enjoy Spain. And um, yeah, I'm now you're you're making me jealous. I I wasn't until I, I I talked to you. Now I'm like, man, I need to get back to that. So um, uh, hopefully you have a good flight and then enjoy. Valencia and WLPC and the community that you've built. And um, hopefully we can have you on, um, you know, maybe later and we'll talk about how this one went and what what's coming up with Mexico City. So we can try to get some uh, some people to that one for you. So absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much for having me. Um, we have uh, at the end of every session, we we have a saying in Spanish, uh, se les quiere gratis. Uh, in English, that would be like, um, oh, geez, how do you translate that? Hey. <laughs> Basically, what that literally means is, you know, um, like, geez, that's like something so simple. I should be able to translate. Uh, se les quiere gratis. It's like free love for everyone, basically. You know, like we love you, like we love you for free. You know, it's just like free love for everybody. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining us and thank everybody for, for listening to um, Fernay and we'll have the links so that you can uh, join the Tesos and Wi-Fi and uh, maybe you'll see me there too. So um, again, thanks for joining us and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you. Have a great week. Hey there. Thanks for listening. If you liked our show and haven't yet done so, please like and subscribe. If you want to contact the show directly, you can email us at ruckcast at comscope.com. Jim and I both read those emails. To learn more about any Ruckus products or services that we've talked about on this or any other prior podcast, please check out our About section of the show or the show notes. And as always, thank you for listening.